Here is the Techniques RSX101. I just gave it another try. This time it actually managed to record on both channels, but the take-up reels still won't run in playback or record. And I found out the reason why. Let's take a closer look. Here is the mechanism of the playback side taken out, and the problem is right there. Here is the take-up reel, and the take-up reel is driven by this gear. And this gear is driven by another gear over here. It comes through from the back of the mechanism, and that gear is driven by the motor via a belt. And you'll notice this gear right here is once again made from this slightly translucent soft plastic and once again it has not stood the test of time. If I move the take-up reel manually you can see there's two teeth missing there. There is another tooth missing there. Another tooth missing there. And okay, that's all the way around. Now, moving this manually and also moving this fast in fast forward, the missing teeth don't cause a problem. But if I fool this mechanism into thinking there is a cassette inside and press playback, you can see it instantly gets stuck. Now, I can uh, move this a little bit further to get past the problematic spot. And let's try this again. See, it made it one revolution. And now it's stuck again. And here is the record side. More complex because this is an auto reverse deck, but the basic arrangement for driving the reels remains the same, and so does the problem. Now, you can see once again down there is the gear right there, and if I turn the take up reel manually, let's see, can we spot the broken tooth? There it is. Any more broken teeth? Yeah, I think that's another one. And I think now we're all the way around. So, likewise over here, the take-up reel gets stuck at the broken tooth. Now you may wonder, well, the other direction, the reverse direction, does work. Now, there is a simple reason for that. The troublesome gear over here is not involved in driving this reel in the reverse direction. That is done directly by this hidden gear that's coming through from the back. So this broken gear is completely out of the game in the reverse direction. So we have two broken gears in this cassette deck, and that means this cassette deck is unrepairable. I will now proceed to tear this cassette deck apart to salvage replacement parts for other cassette deck repair projects. The teardown has been completed, but before I go I'd like to point out some interesting things. The first one is the level meter. This cassette deck had this very very sad mono five segment level meter. But there is absolutely no reason for this to be mono. The level meter in this cassette deck is driven by this AN6888 chip. And this is a stereo level meter chip. If I turn this around, you can see all these pins that are unoccupied. Those are all there for the other channel. So this could have been a stereo level meter. 
And the other thing I'd like to take a closer look at are the broken gears. And this is just to give all the people who think it's oh so easy to just 3D print them some facts so that they can research for themselves how easy it really is to 3D print these gears. So let's see. Let's hope that I can do this. Well, you can already see the size relation with my finger. These gears are tiny, but let's uh, let's try and measure them. Let's try and measure the outer diameter. Okay, and that is about 13 millimeters. Let's measure the hole in the middle, roughly. Uh, won't be entirely accurate. There we go. That seems about right. So that is about two and a half millimeters. Now let's measure one of these uh, teeth, because I have people who keep telling me that I could just simply create those with a file. Um, let's measure the length of one tooth. See, this is this is getting difficult to do without a microscope. Is that no? That's already too small. Let's open this back up a little bit. I think a tooth is going to fit into that roundabout. So, what is that? That is about zero point eight millimeters, less than a millimeter. Let's measure the length of one of these uh, teeth. That's too much already. Well, that seems about right. So that is about one millimeter. So these gears are tiny. And what I'm going to tell you is your typical filament-based printer is not going to be capable of doing that. Now, I was made aware that there is an alternative printing method that uh, rather than using a filament is using a type of resin and apparently those printers are capable of a resolution that is high enough for such a gear but there is a second problem now i keep saying these are made from a soft plastic well let me demonstrate how soft these really are let's uh, see if we can do this Look at that. Look at that. You can you can bend them around like this, no problem at all. This is a really, really soft material. This almost feels like a type of rubber. And the soft material, this is not optional. Um, the first thing that this soft material does is it reduces noise. And, of course... On a piece of hi-fi equipment, you want to, the mechanism to be as silent as possible. The second thing that this does is these gears are not permanently engaged. They are engaged and disengaged depending on the mode that the mechanism is in. So having this from kind of a soft material creates a certain tolerance that allows the gears to fall into place more easily when they are engaged. If you make this from a hard plastic, not only is the mechanism going to be screaming loud, but also uh, you might end up with situations where instead of just simply engaging, the gears are just going to jam up. So that's the other thing, the soft plastic. So those are the two challenges. And now another method that was brought up in another video in the comment section is to create a mold from these gears. Now, of course, you can't create a mold anymore from these gears. It's too late because they already have some broken teeth. But if you have a gear that you know is critical and might break soon, it's very well possible to create a mold and then you can use that mold to pour new gears from a, sort of a, a resin type material and apparently there is resin available that results in gears as soft as these. So that's another good point. But 
That's about as far as I would like to go in this video and in general. I'm certainly interested in methods to replace these gears, but I don't think I would ever do it myself unless I come across a really, really special cassette deck that I think is worth this much effort. So those are all thoughts that I would like to document, just simply so that we can finally bring some facts into this ongoing debate, and I don't constantly have to put up with ridiculous suggestions that are guaranteed to fail. Thank you for watching.